Hi, I'm Dr. Christine Olszewski, and today we'll be discussing what to expect before and after your intraocular injection of anti-VEGF drugs such as Avastin, Lucentis, or Ilea. If you're watching this video, it's probably your first time learning about or experiencing an injection into the eye. It's normal to feel a little nervous before the first injection, but you're in good hands. We do many, many of these injections every day at the New York Eye Cancer Center, and complications, although possible, are very rare. In fact, this procedure is currently one of the most common surgical procedures in the United States. Literally thousands of people get these injections every month to treat a variety of eye conditions, the most common being macular degeneration. Although most of these anti-VEGF drugs are used to treat macular degeneration, in 2005, Dr. Finger discovered that it also works for radiation damage to the retina and optic nerve. Months, or more commonly years, after successful radiation treatment for intraocular melanoma or orbital tumors, some people will develop radiation retinal problems, however others might not. The risk for developing radiation retinopathy or neuropathy depends on tumor location, type of radiation used, and the dose of radiation. Generally, tumors towards the back and central part of the eye are at highest risk for developing radiation side effects in the eye. If these side effects are left untreated, the patient risks permanent loss of their vision. At the New York Eye Cancer Center, we are constantly monitoring patients' eyes for early vascular changes that suggest intraocular anti-VEGF injections might be needed. Once we see these signs, intraocular injections are an excellent way to suppress this collateral ocular radiation damage and thereby preserve our patient's vision for as long as possible. Dr. Finger reminds patients that most diseases, like high blood pressure, diabetes, arthritis, and others are not cured with medication. For these diseases, drugs will diminish their damage and prolong life. Similarly, with anti-VEGF drugs, long-term treatment is typically required to suppress the radiation damage to the retina and optic nerve. Okay, so now it's time for your injection. This procedure is done in the office right in the examination chair. First, we will start your visit as we would any other by checking your vision, eye pressure, and health of the front part of the eye. Then the eye getting the injection must be dilated. We will take some color photographs and measurements of the tissues in the back of the eye. At first, these examinations establish a baseline. Then they're used to monitor your response to the injected medication. To prepare for your injection, we first place a numbing anesthetic drop onto the eye. This is the same numbing drop we used to check your eye pressure. Soon after numbing, we place a drop of the antibiotic betadine 5%. This brown-colored iodine-based drop cleanses the surface of the eye. Following the betadine, we will put in a drop of tetravisc. This is another, much thicker, more powerful numbing drop that will make the injection more comfortable. After two to four minutes, we will put a second numbing tetravisc drop in and wait an additional two to four minutes. Lastly, we instill a second betadine drop 30 seconds before the intraocular injection. At the moment of injection, the patient is typically seated in the exam chair with the back of his or her head on the headrest. Dr. Finger will instruct you to look in a particular direction and to keep your eyes still. With manual lid retraction and using a tiny 30 gauge needle, he'll administer an angled injection through the white part of the eye. The injection is angled so that when the medication increases the pressure in the eye, the wound seals itself and prevents loss of medication. Any medication that leaks out will not be available to help your retina or optic nerve. A study by researchers from the New York Eye Cancer Center found that these angled injections deliver a higher dose of medication while creating a self-sealing wound, therefore closing a potential entryway for pathogens. After the injection, we may gently wash off some of the excess betadine off the front part of the eye with a preservative-free tear to decrease your chance of discomfort once you leave the office. It is important to remember that your eye will be numb during this injection. Some patients report feeling nothing at all, while others report feeling a slight pinch or sensation of pressure. Don't worry, this can happen. After the injection, your eye may feel slightly irritated for up to 24 hours. This is usually from the betadine rather than the ejection itself. It's also common for patients to experience a little ocular redness. You can take Tylenol or Advil to help with discomfort if need be. 
You may also notice a red spot of blood on the white part of the eye at the injection site, which may get larger before it starts to improve. This is normal and it's similar to a bruise, which will clear on its own over time. After an intraocular injection, you may see round circles floating in your vision. These are bubbles and usually go away within a day or two. In addition to the anti-VEGF injections, we also sometimes give our patients intraocular injections of steroid. Unlike the common anti-VEGF drugs, steroids are white and until they dissolve, they will cause large floaters in your vision that go away within days to a couple of weeks. A rare but serious complication of intraocular injection is infection called endophthalmitis. The main symptom of intraocular infection is pain. So if you are a patient of the New York Eye Cancer Center and are experiencing pain within 24 hours of injection, you must call the New York Eye Cancer Center's telephone number at 212-832-8170. Also let us know if you are experiencing a sudden increase in floaters, flashes of light, a decrease in vision, persistent headache after injection, pain in the eye, a curtain or dark veil over your vision. These could be signs of an ocular emergency, in which case you'd need to be seen for a dilated eye exam as soon as possible. However, try not to worry. Injections are usually given without any complications. If you have any other questions, feel free to give us a ring at the office. We'll see you soon.